Hi friends, my name is Bethany Benz Whittington. I am a PCUSA pastor and teacher, and this is a current event series that I do through Sacred Calls, which is my own educational ministry. Each week I pick up on something happening in the world and pair it with scripture and I dig in to how we respond to it. It's kind of like a sermon, but I will say things that your pastor probably won't. So hopefully it's good fodder for discussion. I am once again in a different place this week. Uh, I'm covering for a friend who is on maternity leave, so I am at her place of work. And today is November the 15th, 2023. This week we're talking about Thanksgiving. It's coming up and I have a lot of feelings about it. And I wonder if you do too, or Maybe after today, you will. We'll see. Before we start, pause the video and read together Psalm 23. Then come back and we'll go. I recently preached on Psalm 23 on several occasions, actually. And on each of those occasions, I made sure to acknowledge that this is very typically a funeral psalm. I have used it for every funeral I've ever done, sometimes with great joy for a life well lived, and sometimes with deep sorrow for a life cut short. So if for any reason hearing this psalm brings you pain, that's okay. You are welcome to, invited to, step out if you need to take a few minutes to take care of yourself. So let's talk Thanksgiving. Like I said, I have a lot of feelings about it. Its history is a bit muddled, a lot mythic, and easily confused. My big complaint is that it gets held up as this moment of great cooperation between pilgrims and the Wampanoag people, whereby, as children, we all learn the mythic version of it, including the potatoes. There were no potatoes. In reality, it has multiple origin stories. It's kind of an appropriation of the Wampanoag harvest celebration. And also it helps us to feel less bad about things like the genocide we did to the Native Americans. Interestingly, several presidents, including President Lincoln, called for a national day of giving thanks and in Lincoln's own words, humble penitence for our national perverseness and disobedience to fervently implore the interposition of the Almighty Hand to heal the wounds of the nation. From him, especially immediately after the Civil War and from a few others, there was a sense that we're not perfect and should definitely acknowledge that. Others, though, have been less humble and called for a day of giving thanks because everything is so great and wonderful and perfect and America is the best. My words, but not entirely out of, out of context. The long, weird history of Thanksgiving also comes with a giant footnote that the Native Americans, especially the Wampanoag, across the First Nations, Thanksgiving is known as a national day of mourning. And I say a national day of mourning, not the national day of mourning, because Columbus Day is also known by that name among First Nations. And, of course, no group is a monolith. So there's also a movement among some native tribes to restart their own Thanksgiving festivals, which they believe come alongside the harvest quite nicely. And in addition to all of that, there are deeply complicated feelings around Thanksgiving for black American families, particularly families who are descendants of American slavery. Because there was a time when black Americans were not free, when they were property. There was no such thing as a holiday or even a family gathering. Because of that history, big family gatherings in many black families now are considered subversive, a way to honor their ancestors who couldn't do such things. So quite often they will gather on the day of Thanksgiving even if they don't celebrate Thanksgiving itself. Finally, as I am sure you are aware, a giant national celebration that centers around food is a near impossibility for many, many Americans. Where I grew up, every year 
e we either participated in or gave money to an organization called Hosea Feed the Homeless. It was a feeding drive started by Hosea Williams, who was a longtime civil rights activist and executive director of the SCL scene. He would collect thousands upon thousands of turkey dinners to be distributed on the streets of Atlanta. It's one of the largest Thanksgiving Day food distributions in the country. Because so many people in this, one of the richest countries on earth, cannot afford to eat, much less put together a whole traditional feast. So yes, I have big issues with Thanksgiving. There's an old Calvinist thread that we could pull on about giving thanks for God's providence. And in certain places in New England, that absolutely is a thing they do. Um, do I wish they would spend more time on Calvin's uh, doctrine of depravity? Yes. But it's because I really struggle with the idea of God's providence being tied up with the destruction of people and their way of life. And I think if we all really take some time with that particular concept, we will begin to feel a shift in the way that we see a lot of things. So I've told you about some of my issues with Thanksgiving. Another, perhaps the most pertinent for us here today, is the mingling of church and state so prevalent in this particular holiday. All the proclamations and celebrations of this day center around giving thanks to God, a national holiday to give thanks to God. The only president who stood firmly against this was Thomas Jefferson, who really just refused to recognize the day. And maybe that's why we phased out the $2 bill. Don't worry, he's fine, he's still on the nickel. Anyway, the mingling of church and state gets us in a lot of trouble. It leads us into unmanageable conflict because we believe God is on our side, so we can't be wrong. We see this even in the most comforting, intended to be thankful of Psalms. David, the best worst king of ancient Israel, says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. He's not only giving thanks to God for his own rest and peace and comfort and protection, he's kind of thumbing his nose at his enemies and saying, God is on my side. And we've seen this over and over and over throughout the course of human history, right? In American history especially, I won, so God loves me more. And yikes and ouch, it's just not a good look for anyone who believes in a gracious, loving, merciful God, which I do. I believe in the God who, even though David was a wretched man, still took him to lie down in green pastures and led him beside still waters and comforted him through the turmoil he likely brought upon himself. I believe in the God who would prepare a table for David in the company of his enemies and then invite those enemies to eat as well. That table is kind of reminiscent of that mythic first Thanksgiving. If only we could go, could hold on to the goodness and createdness, the imago dei of the other. If only we could keep inviting each other and turn those enemies into friends. If only we could strive to turn David's I into a we. What would the world look like if he had said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow all of us, all of our lives, and we will all dwell in the house of the Lord together forever. What if? So friends, you have a discussion guide. I hope that it is fruitful this time that you have together. And I am taking next week off because Thanksgiving. Uh, and so I will see you the week after. Peace.